So, hi everybody. Uh, first of all, is there anyone who doesn't speak Czech, actually? There is. Okay, great. So, we'll stay in English. Uh, great. So, first of all, thank you all for coming here today. Um, you know, when I was preparing the presentation a week ago, um, I read the annotation again. Uh, I didn't quite remember what it should be about. And I, I was like, okay, this, this is quite boring. This, this sounds like some kind of sales pitch. I wouldn't come here, actually. <laughs> so uh, let me tell you what will be on today's menu first, or, or what, what won't be on today's menu. So first of all, I won't talk about uh, cool, cool new architectures, uh, which, are, which, which gives you two more percents on this data set. Some, you know, this amazing new nonlinearity. I won't talk about it. Uh, it won't be about some super duper cool large models trained on, you know, on 200 GPUs, cause like no problem. Uh, it won't be here today. Uh, I won't tell you uh, the recipe how to get 100% on NIST or ImageNet or whatever you are interested in. I won't give you free GPUs, uh, but I will give you one advice though on how to, you know, make your models, deep learning models better. And there's, you know, stack more layers. Uh, just add them, and it'll be, it'll be good. So, what it will be uh, about uh, uh, today, actually, uh, it will be about deep learning, but more on sort of conceptual level. You know, uh, all the aspects, all the uh, obstacles and, and problems you will encounter uh, doing deep learning for a living. Actually, uh, I will start with a tiny bit of uh, history. Uh, I will tell you about our beginner story, which began like three or four years ago. Uh, I, f I, I hope that you will, you know, you will kind of we will be able to relate uh, on some on some things uh, that you, we are not alone. Uh, we are in this together. Uh, yeah, uh, and. <laughs> of course, kittens, <laughs> because you know everybody loves them, and, and just look at those tiny paws. It's 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 very cute. So uh, let's start with the hype train. You know, it's it's indeed hype train. I think that everyone sees that. Uh, I did a bit research on this on this timeline. Really, it it, it you know uh, required some digging, but eventually I found out that the deep learning, the term itself, emerged in 2006. Uh, it, it was Hinton, actually. Uh, I think it's quite familiar with this name. Uh, it was Hinton who first used it and start, you know, uh, claiming that he's going deeper than the others uh, with some, some. I think it was uh, deep uh, autoencoders uh, stacked and trained iteratively. But it was really you know, six years later uh, with the Krzyzewski AlexNet, which made, you know, which sparked the the renaissance of, of deep learning, actually. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, it's almost six years now, so let's, uh, let's talk about what, what happened in, in these years. And, you know, I will be able to, you know, put tons of interesting and breakthrough models in, in image recognition and, and speech and etc. Uh, I, I don't have space for all of them. Uh, so let's talk about the, the frameworks which actually enabled all this. Uh, I mean, without, without these net, uh, frameworks, you we wouldn't be able to do any deep learning, actually. And uh, I was surprised, actually, that the Teano is apparently the very first one, uh, which was uh, first released and and published in 2010. Uh, so it's like one or two years before the Krzyzewski AlexNet. So we all could be, you know, it could be FlipNet or you know, PeterNet if we, we, have, we had the tools already back then. Uh, and I don't know if you are, if you guys are, well, okay, so let's, let's do a bit, you know, research here and, and also a survey. So which one, which one of you actually can, can uh, code in Python? Hands up. Come on, hands up. Yeah, almost everybody. I, I, I thought. So which one of you actually, you know, can write really good Python? Uh, you are experienced with it. You, you know, you just told your coworker that, you know, you're using Python of 3.5. It's so lame. Come on. 3.6. There's so many new features. How many of you can code Python like that? <laughs> but don't be shy, actually. Come on. Come on. There, there has to be one or two guys. No, okay. So, uh... Which one of you, just me a second, yeah, uh, how many of you can, you know, write in C++ some code? 
Great, cool, that's cool. How many of you wrote something in CUDA? Or something that can run on G? Yeah, cool, that's a little bit less. Now, let, let's get back to the deep learning, actually. Uh, how many of you guys tried you know, to put up, put up some network in, in Keras framework? Yeah, that's the spirit, cool. And how many of you, you know, work with TensorFlow on a regular basis, the low-level TensorFlow, you, you, you can actually you know, create, put the variables and ops together. How many of you guys do that? That's cool, okay, thank you. Uh, and how many of you use some other framework than, than TensorFlow? Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I would be happy to, to see more of you uh, non-TensorFlow guys. Uh, how many of you do some kind of reinforcement learning at this moment? And I don't mean, you know, poor balancing, I mean, like, really some kind of reinforcement learning. Okay, okay, thank you. So, uh, and, and I, let's get back to Tiana. How many of you guys actually, you know, experienced Tiana back then, like, a few years ago, right? So, like, three or four guys, yeah. And, and it was crazy, right? <laughs> it was, it was pain, yes, uh, so, but uh, my point is that it was the town, the very first one, who put many concepts to to uh, to the bank and and pushed you know the the GPU computationally fo forward and enabled th those poor Python uh, Python fellas like me uh, uh, to actually do some kind of deep learning. Uh, then the torch came in the cafe. Cafes also were also quite popular back then, and then you know the the TensorFlow hit the deck really and and. And the, the Google trend, this is actually the blue line, you know, was start scaring uh, to, to, the, to the highs. And we are like, you know, somewhere here right now. Uh, so that's, that's, the, that's the history. So, um, and, and we, we actually entered the business in somewhere in 2013, 14, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, this is quite approximate. So it was, you know, way before the TensorFlow. It was, it was after the cafe, I think that we, we considered Cafe to, to, to do our stuff. Uh, and, you know, we were a small team, like three or four guys. Uh, it was actually one in, in the beginning and three, two and three later on. And, you know, uh, I think it's pretty much the same today, but back then we have this, you know, tutorial on Tiana and, like, you know, missed on 450 lines of code. That's, that's quite crazy. Uh, what, what were in this code? It was, you know, it included the data download, uh, some kind of data streaming with any sort of augmentations. It defined the graph on, you know, the, the variables and expression levels. So you, need, you needed to know the math behind it. Uh, you need to define the optimizer. Then, you know, the main loop was really a for loop. And you literally went through the data and, and ran the, the training function. Uh, and somewhere, in, so, somewhere you, you'll be able to find some performance monitoring. So, so yeah. 450 lines code of that. Uh, today, it's like 17 keras. Uh, but it's quite different, actually. Uh, the data download at many of the data stuff is hidden somewhere in the keras framework. Uh, the graph definition is no more on the, on the operations and, and, and the variables level. You just stack you know, uh, layers, actually, instead of expressions. Uh, you just run a modal compile and modal fit. There's no actually there's no for loop. It's it's also hidden in the side, and it makes you it makes the script quite a bit shorter. So I wonder uh, which one of these two you know tutorial scripts you would actually prefer. So who is for the Keras? One, two, three. Okay, so so it's like like a, a third, and who is, who would rather start with the the back the the, the old Tiana code? Who better liked that more? Because it's, so. Okay, yeah, it's it's not who actually didn't vote for anything. Why? <laughs> I mean, come on, you 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 need to have some opinion. So let's try it again. So who is for the Keras code? The simple, high level. All right, so that's roughly a half. So we don't have to do the voting. It's the other half for the turn, right? Okay. Uh, well, I personally think that you know uh, both approaches gives you something. Um, I personally like to stay somewhere in between. I, I want to you know, define the graph on the layers level, ideally, uh, unless you, you, you need to do you know, some really new stuff that's not available yet. 
Uh, I'm completely fine with modal fit sort of thing if you can customize it as you want to. Uh, but you know, it's again, it's pretty much the same in in, in the essence actually. Uh, so so you run it and you will get the the 99 point something uh, per accuracy, and then you realized, oh crap, I didn't save the model. <laughs> Uh, I need to, you know, put some kind of saving there. Uh, I also need, I would like to see what, what the results are, where, where the model makes some uh, errors. Uh, I would like to try if learning rate decaying helps you. I would like to see some kind of logging to, to know what's happening in there. So, you know, just, just take the script and put some ex extra snippets in there. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, actually. Then you realize, okay, so I would like to configure the, the graph. I'd like to make, you know, more stack more layers. That's, that's the recipe, right? So you, you somehow put the configuration for the graph definition. Uh, you will lock the, the configuration, so you, you will know later what, what, what you actually uh, run just now. Uh, if you want to, you know, get not 99.1, but you, you want you know, 99.5, then you, you will add some augmentations. And it, by the time it, it, the screen will be quite bulky, you will have like 20 parameters or so uh, if you want to run it. Uh, and then you realize, all right, so my model is quite cool uh, at the moment. Uh, I would like to get the predictions, actually. I would like to restore the, the saved model uh, with the same configuration. You, you mean, I mean, did I normalize the, the data before putting it to the model or not? So, so you you would, you would need to you know configure both the, the training script and the prediction script. It's it's still quite simple. You know, it's like 50 lines of code or less, uh, no problem. Uh, you you will if if you are not doing your NIST tutorial script anymore, you are you know dealing with some real data. You probably would like to have the the data split into some tra training and validation. Um, uh, sets, so you would need to act like you know, data pie script, which would do that for you, uh, which would download, download the, the annotation and the data um, from some you know uh, cloud or something. Uh, you just realize, okay, so deep learning is super cool. Uh, let's buy two or four GPUs. Uh, and now you you will need to you know have some kind of scheduler to, to run all the trainings and and so so you you, you could you you would be able to queue a few trainings ahead uh, and then yeah, like left for a week and, and see the results later on so so that's the scheduler uh, and once you you know you are starting getting bigger you are getting bigger and at some point you have like tens or, or hundreds of trainings and you would like to compare the results on them. Uh, so let's let's assume we just you know put down a script, which is called compare.py, which would load the logs, uh, load the, the precision, uh, and find the best configuration for you. Perhaps at some you know plots uh, uh, as well. So really you will be able to find the, the best best configuration for you, and then assemble etc. 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 And then you know there's really many many things you will eventually. Uh, encounter and, and write a short script for, for, for that. And then a new project comes up. Uh, and it's, it's a bit different, but also the bit, bit same. So in many ways, you would need to do all this. But it's no longer you know, accuracy, it's, it's a fun score, it's segmentation, classification, uh, or it's machine translation. So all the augmentations would be different. Uh, the data now is still quite the same. Uh, you still still need a scheduler, but you know you need to change things. So, how do you do that? Um, you can you know just copy paste all of your code and, and tweak the, the little things you need to change. Um, yeah, that's that's probably not a great idea. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, that's not a good idea. Uh, you can you know everything reorganize and and modularize everything so uh, you you minimize the the, the code, code duplicity uh, but who has a time for that right so you need to deliver the project in two weeks or so so uh, more, more most likely you would end up with the, the first option or you know you, you realize let's let's not uh, do the, all the work again and let's find the model that is already working and. Uh, such, you know, you will find something on GitHub. I'm, I'm quite sure uh, there's everything, and it will, you know, it will you do like the, this for you and, and that for you. It will be missing, you know, some some you know, some features you you already have. 
so it will be some work to you know uh, you know adapt it to, to your problem anyways. Uh, and if you want to um, have like three or four concurrent projects uh, and you want to maintain them long term, uh, you would really need to somehow approach it systematically. Um, I mean, share as many utilities and features between your projects. Uh, somehow standardize the project so that uh, the team members uh, know how to, you know, uh, take over your project or a colleague's project, uh, and maintain all this long term. So if you know TensorFlow, uh, there's a new release of TensorFlow which will break all your scripts again. Then hopefully uh, <laughs> you have some portion extracted in, in your you know platform framework. You will fix this small part, and, and then all your projects will start will be working again. Uh, and we realize that as soon as we have like uh, we as as the Cognexa. Uh, for example, in the last year, we we have like 15 pr different projects. Some of them are, you know, really just just some kind of uh, experiments, uh, one shot. Uh, some some of them are Kaggle projects, for example. Some of them are uh, projects and custom solutions for our clients. So we definitely want to maintain these these long term. Uh, so how the you know how the life cycle of machine learning engineer or machine learning kind of company which is, which are uh, which delivers uh, custom solutions uh, based on machine learning and deep learning to actual customers so first of all you have this you know kind of uh, training cycle you will collect the data annotate the data uh, train a model uh, evaluate the performance of it and you realize okay oh, so it's like a third of my annotations are incorrect, so uh, you need to correct them. Uh, you, you realize, then I need like twice twice the data I have at the moment. So you you will this sort of cycling this cycle, but you know eventually you will find the the sweet spot. You have enough data, you have a, a quite quite good model, and you will want to deploy it. And it really doesn't matter if it's you know a microservice with the model or if you integrate it to a mobile device. Doesn't really matter. Uh, what once you do, you want to you know, monitor its performance. Uh, you you want to save the the, the examples if if that's possible, uh, and and eventually uh, you retrain the model to adapt to to new data. Uh, if it's better than, than the old model, then you know replace it, uh, and, and uh, you will iterate and you will be stuck in this cycle as well. Uh, did I forget something? Yeah, the ch child labor, of course. Uh, it's actually, you know, uh, Eric and Kenny, each of, each of these guys have four GPUs. It's the, 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 it's the name of our servers. Uh, and at this point, uh, I'd like to ask if, if you do your, your machine learning, is it, is it on your own hardware or is it, uh, is it in, in cloud? So actually, so who is the cloud guy here? Heads up. Two, four, three. Four, five, and who is the? You know, I have my own hardware. I I want to have the models back back home. Okay, I want to uh, sort of sort of equal. So so both options are viable. I think it depends on how much uh, how much you do you do. Uh, we have at the moment we have two two of these guys, and and they do the heavy lifting. The point here is that you need to you know uh, so, sort of, sort of you know utilize the resources effectively uh, efficiently. Uh, you will have multiple projects uh, which are trained and multiple projects which are already delivered, so you need to you know, serve them, serve your models. So what are all the requirements on, on you know, uh, the, the, the machine learning uh, in practice? Uh, it will be quite a lo quite lot, I think. So uh, let, let, let's you know, start really, uh, on the let's start bottom up. And, and with the model training, so I already tackled those topics. You need, uh, you know, some kind of modular and reusable uh, uh, sort of toolbox uh, to help you do multiple projects and maintain them. Uh, and it's not the first point here. Uh, 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 it's, it's the fi first point for a reason because I think that's, that's, this is this is really the, the crucial uh, part of it. Uh, part, uh, crucial requirement there. Uh, you want to have all your experiments traceable uh, and repeatable. Uh, at any point, you want to uh, want to 
you know, take the, the best performing uh, model from uh, similar projects you did this a year ago, uh, and you want to take the exact same configuration and again get the same results and apply the, the very same model uh, on your new project. So, so you would definitely want that. Uh, you want to, you know, don't give up any kind of customization. Uh, uh, we often um, realized you know, that we need to go uh, deeper and, and deeper, not in the mean of you know number of layers, but in the means of that we'll get to, to some kind of detail. Uh, you know, uh, write down our own initialization, whatever. So you don't want to give up any of the opportunities to to get back to the low level stuff. Uh, you know, uh, I, I I put like five or six frameworks to the to the to the timeline. Uh, there's actually a lot more of them. Uh, um, some clients may not be able to run models in that framework, so so perhaps the TensorFlow is not awesome for everything. So you want to support multiple frameworks if, if possible. Uh, you want to, of course, train and monitor uh, monitor your training progress, uh, the performance, and, and perhaps uh, you want to visualize your results and and to in order to uh, do the analysis. Uh, and you want to you know efficiently utilize the resources. Uh, in some cases, you will have large models, so it won't fit one GPU. So you want uh, to have uh, some kind of multi GPU or multi node parallelization. Uh, you want to have, of course, this GPU CPU parallelism to, you know, uh, juice up your GPUs, uh, make use of them, uh, and just, you know, the the uh, the the, the, the modeling uh, stuff, you, the training of one model at, at at a time on one machine or multiple machines. Uh, you need also some kind of management if you do that in scale. Uh, so I mentioned already scheduling. Uh, you need to able you need to be able to you know uh, select the best performing models. Uh, you need to you know collaborate on these projects efficiently, and uh, you will have some new guys coming in, and they will need to learn about your framework. Uh, or toolbox, and so so you want to you know allow to easily entry your, your team or uh, exchange uh, members of the of the teams working on different projects, uh, and you want to you know uh, do the, the the machine learning tricks, all the assembling, stacking, begin, etc., uh, and perhaps many more, uh, and and that's perhaps the crucial part. You should you should be able to you know. Uh, Effectively deploy your models, um, embed them in mobile devices. Um, you want to perhaps make some models smaller, uh, so you, uh, you want to have some kind of procedure or, or, or um, uh, uh, support for that. Uh, uh, for continuous retraining, also, uh, ideally, uh, once you have trained model, you want to have you know some some kind of uh, some some uh, server which would uh, create uh, an API really without any effort, which would be able, which would allow to uh, you know uh, get the results from from the model uh, for the production. Uh, yeah, and I wonder if you guys have anything else on your on your minds, uh, anything you you encounter it in in your your experience, any requirement you yeah over there. Yeah, ideally, yeah, I think that's that's. that's uh, I, I didn't put it down down here, but ideally, you would, you know, it's part of the mo performance monitoring. I think. Uh, uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's perhaps uh, you would use, I suppose, different wording, but I would say it's it's sort of part of the monitoring performance. I mean, of course, you you would like to you would you want to allow uh, the users to give feedback, and and by that you would perhaps identify the the, the wrongly incorrectly classified examples. Uh, so you know you would be able to you know check out them and find what's what's wrong with the model. That's just I would agree agree with that. Uh, 
So anything else? You would, you know, just imagine you have this, you know, sort of, uh, sort of uh, holy grail of, of machine learning. You are the engineer, and and now is the time to to uh, materialize the, the to, you know, to, to list the features you want from from this perfect framework, which would do basically all the work for you. So what would be there besides that? Okay, so so let's assume that this is all, uh, more or less. <laughs> uh, and now it, it looks like a really lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff. Uh, each particular one is, that is not that hard, but if you, if you want to uh, have everything at one time, then it seems to me that it's, that's, that's quite crazy. Uh, good, good news, everyone. We're already working on it. <laughs> so uh, we are coding star solutions, right? So we have this, you know, CX asterisk family of projects, uh, which you know aim to address all all of these. Uh, we are of course not there yet. Uh, we started uh, again bottom up, so so most of these features are already in place, and we are moving up. Uh, slowly, as we need to do the, the projects as, as well, but we are working on it. So, so what's in the CX family actually uh, at this very moment? So there is the the CX flow, or or the the backbone, or if you are a pessimist, then it's you know the fancy fancy for loop, uh, but you know what's not? Uh, basically, everything is for loop. So. Right now, I will show you all the sources of CXLow at one time. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> it's uh, and and this is actually a screenshot for, for from the code. So there is a for loop. There is a guy doing doing the stuff or poking to to your models to do stuff. Uh, okay, so now for you, uh, it's it's let's say it's a, it's a launcher of your models. It will help you to conveniently. Configure everything. Uh, it it you know so, sort of enforces really nice uh, modular structure, uh, so you'd be able to re reuse basically all the code you write later on. Uh, but alone, it doesn't do basically anything. You need to you know uh, uh, write some kind of model and data set in, in, a, in a different framework, and we have this adapter to TensorFlow, uh, also known as the, the people's choice, and we, uh, we, we saw that, that, that basically uh, all, of, of, all, of the, all the guys here are using the TensorFlow, so it's for you. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't use TensorFlow, actually. Uh, I, I, would, I would do it for in a different framework. Uh, we have CXStream, that's, it's, uh, that our uh, CXStream is a project with for, uh, you know, sort of high efficient, uh, uh, highly modular uh, data streams with all sorts of augmentations written in C++, and therefore it's the, the pain for us, or at least for me, uh, I'm not the C++ guy. Uh, we have uh, CX blocks. Uh, also known as the blocks. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't have ideas for that. Um, with you know uh, tons of models, augmenters, and utilities we use basically in all of our projects. Uh, and VSCX worker and dealer, uh, who which which will eventually uh, aim the the. Uh, management and and um, you know, sort of thing. Uh, the 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 things in the red boxes are actually. Uh, not publicly available. Uh, the green ones are open source, so uh, you can already uh, use those. And we are continue, we are working all the time to move stuff from from the red to, to the green area. So uh, you know we, we kind of like open source. All the guys in the team, so we are working on it. Uh, so let's let's look closely on, on all of these CX. Uh, CX stuff. Uh, let's start with the CX little basics, all right? Uh, so, uh, in deep learning, uh, unlike in the machine learning in general, uh, every, basically everything is done uh, empirically. So, so all the better architectures 
most of them. I mean, there there is some reasoning uh, behind them, but uh, basically it's all you know empirical stuff. So you are just experimenting with the models again and again until it gives you the 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 the, the, the model you want. Uh, so the building block of of uh, the CX flow workflow is experiment, which consists of three crucial components: uh, a data set, a model, and their configuration. Uh, and in fact, in fact, basically everything is you know compliant with CXLow because uh, configuration is uh, YAML file basically. Uh, a data set has to have a constructor. That's that's not not so too hard to have. Uh, a model has also a constructor, and you know it, it has to give you uh, the the names of I/O tensors or inputs and outputs in general. Uh, it has to have a run function, which would do the training actually, uh, and it has to it has to have the safe function, and, and that's that's pretty much it. We don't want more. So uh, the requirements are really uh, uh, not that uh, that high, and uh, thanks to that, we are able to you know adapt CXflow to basically any framework, uh, any. Uh, it can be SciPy sci sci under under here. It can be CNTK, Cafe or whatever you like. Um, you just need to, you know, uh, adapt the, the model for, for these, these, these uh, libraries. Uh, so let's start with the configuration, actually. And I think it's more of more like self-explanatory. Uh, I don't know, I hope you guys know YAML, actually. Uh, do you? OK. Uh, so it's sort of JSON, but uh, a bit more flexible. Uh, but I'm sure you can read it. Uh, the, every config has four sections, which actually only one is uh, required, the data set section. Uh, and the others are optional. Uh, you need to specify which dat data set you, you want to use, right? Uh, and then you, will, you can have any other parameters you want to have. Uh, it's the same case for the model. You need to specify which model to use, uh, and the uh, inputs, outputs. It's actually, you know, already the CXLow TensorFlow kind of stuff. Uh, but I, I suppose you you will need to configure these two things. Uh, the main loop is completely optional. Uh, you see that that, that there's uh, there's extra streams uh, parameter. Uh, you want you want to, to have a test stream, so. I suppose that the data sets, uh, besides that they have constructors, uh, should provide you the data streams. That's you know uh, not that unexpected. Uh, and the, perhaps the most interesting part is the, is the hooks section. I mean, you know, it's, it's, hooks are not our invention. Uh, it's something that the, 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 the principle is, is, uh, is here, and, and most of the uh, Frameworks which will help you with uh, deep learning, uh, even Keras have um, hooks. But you know, we really build everything around them. Uh, we have all, lots of them already available. And you, you, to, in order to use the hook, you don't need to modify the code, you just modify the config. Uh, so your versioning should be fine. And also, you, you can override any of these settings later on in the command line. I'll, I'll get into that. So basically, you have which data set and how to, how to configure, it, uh, configure it, which model to use, uh, which hooks to use. Uh, yeah, and w you have this uh, configuration file. You have a uh, model and data set. I'll, I'll sh show you some examples later on. You tell the Sayslow guy to do this stuff. Uh, and eventually, you will get uh, you know, some, let's, let's call it a log folder. And it will, it will surely contain uh, the very same configuration file you just used uh, for the traceability, right? Uh, it will be contained in the full look and sort of trace, which is a few, you know, a um, few um, uh, info that is always in place, like when the training started and when it, where it ended and, and you know, uh, it, it, it does the the sexual does it automatically. Uh, optionally, and but most likely, you will have a saved model there and some you know additional artifacts, for example, some kind of visualizations and whatnot. Uh, and you know, uh, if you are experimenting, then you are basically you you, you want to you know configure configure 
uh, try different kind of configurations, obtain multiple, you know, these folders. Uh, you can resume the training stored there at any time, and you can, you know, find uh, the best uh, configuration in in in, this, in the folder. Uh, then you, you you will you know keep the data state in place. Just exchange the model for something else. Uh, and it's really simple to to do the you know the main uh, machine learning uh, workload stuff. Uh, so how do you actually use this CX flow? We have uh, command line instruments at the very moment. Uh, you have this CX flow command. Uh, so let's, let's go through them. Uh, you have CSS data set something command uh, to, and, and this actually you know invokes uh, any method you defined it uh, define it in, in your data set. And you know I it, it might surprise, but I find this extremely useful because you know uh, if you don't need to download the data, process the data, uh, visualize if, if the data are you know, the, the data you expect. Uh, usually, you have some kind of scripts for that, right? But the data sets give you unified uh, interface. So uh, if you come to a Salesforce project, you always know uh, how to, where to start. You look at the data set, find what methods are, are defined there, and you, you, you will be able to always learn like Salesforce data set download, oh, which config and, and that's it. Uh, then there's also, uh, of course, the train and resume command uh, and predict. I, I, I don't think that I need to explain those. Uh, CXLow LS uh, behaves uh, quite like the, the LS command uh, in Linux system. It lists uh, all the trainings and info about them, uh, which you have in your folder. Uh, and you, you know, there's. Uh, uh, let's skip this uh, six slope prune. Um, so you, you know, you, everything should be the, the the beginning of of, of project is like let's define data set, let's define the model, uh, write down a config, like three files only, and then you just uh, change the config, run training, change the config, run training, or you can override you know certain parameters. Uh, right in the command line, so you can you know, type like say slow train this, but model uh, model dot uh, learning rate is no zero point two two um, two one, but zero point five, let's say, and the all the override override it uh, configuration variables will be stored in the log folder, so you will you will have also track of that. Um, so then. The CSL TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow is uh, uh? <laughs> uh, apparently I uh, the, the Mac didn't the mic didn't work at all. So uh. fuck it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it work? I see. Okay. So is it all right now? Oh, uh, okay. Sorry for the confusion. So, so. Next, the CXLow TensorFlow is really an adapter uh, for the CXLow to allow defining C TensorFlow models like this, and and you know that's it. That's that's all you need to uh, type down if you want to train a TensorFlow model. And you can see that, and it's quite interesting that uh, you have. You c I just combined here uh, the Keras layers API, right, with the TensorFlow stuff. So basically, anything, anything can be here. Uh, it can be Slim. It can be the TensorFlow layers, uh, whatever. As long as you, you know, name uh, the input tensors uh, properly and name the output tensors properly. Uh, and you can see that there's, a, you know, uh, argument dropout, which uh, I don't see here apparently. But uh, <laughs> but you know. Mm, any any parameter here will be you know passed to this create model function, so uh, you don't need to you know pass the the the, um, the arguments through multiple levels of of your code. You, you, or anything you you will uh, you will put down here will end in the in the uh, keyword arguments in the create model function. So it should be fairly simple to uh, configure everything you you have here, uh, and. You know, uh, just just to make sure, uh, there's uh, inputs. There are inputs x and y. 
uh, and we named the tensors correctly. And similarly, the, the outputs are named loss, predictions, accuracy, logits. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, you, don't, you don't need to you know, use everything you define here, just the stuff you want. Um, uh, so, so CISO TensorFlow basically contains a uh, uh, base model implementation, which will do lots of stuff for you. It will do the I.O. fetching for you. Uh, it has out-of-box uh, multi-GPU uh, uh, parallelization with in-graph replication. And you know, uh, use this if you want to scale up for like four or eight GPUs. And you know, just you, you can just change the uh, the number here, and it will be replicated to this number of GPUs. Uh, you don't need to change the code uh, anyhow. Uh, so it does that. Uh, it has out of box uh, tensor board integration. Uh, I think yeah, uh, we have this write tensor board hook, which will write basically any scalar you you uh, fetch as an output. Uh, it will be written to the tensor board. Uh, the tensor board hook actually. Mm, is, uh, yeah, can work for any f any framework you use here. So basically, if you would be able to uh, write a CNTK based model, then the the right tensor hook would work as well. Um, and in th it does the save and restore kind of stuff for you as well, and few more utilities, uh, ops, etc. But uh, the, the it it's just a small stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's the TensorFlow, uh, CX2 TensorFlow, and uh, this is my favorite part, actually, <laughs> CX3, man. You know, uh, when I do C++, it's usually like this. Uh, this is the feeling I have when I write C++ code. Uh, but here's this guy, he's actually, uh, he's actually here, it's Philip, uh, and he, he, knows, uh, he knows it. And um, uh, why we actually opted for, for C++ as the language for, for streams. Uh, well, it's actually quite simple. We want to be able to efficiently stack you know, arbitrary number of, of augmentations of, and operations in data stream uh, and still be able to uh, get under the GPU with the CPU stuff. Uh, and we, we you, uh, in our projects, we usually struggle with data, so the data is quite small, so the data streams are quite uh, heavy, uh, as they, they have to do a lot of stuff, a lot of aggressive augmentations to uh, overcome the, the lack of data. Uh, and if we try to do all of it in Python, then uh, we find out this, that the, the Python isn't the, the great choice for efficient data processing, right? Uh, so, so that's the reason why we choose C++. And, and to, to show you how much is it, you know, C++, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you a little story uh, that uh, it was yesterday, and I looked at, at my GitHub, what's happening there, uh, and I found a commit from Philip to, to this project. And it was the name that really catched my eye, uh, it, the, the commit it was named fixed template template argument, and I was like, all right, so is this a typo or or is it not? <laughs> and I, I was afraid to you know actually ask asked it publicly on the GitHub. I asked him in person, and it's not a typo. It's really fixing some kind of template template stuff. Uh, you can see that he added like three dots there and there and there for some reason. I don't understand, and I want to. I don't want to understand. But uh, ultimately, it will give you a neat code like this. Uh, you can see that there's stacked like uh, ten different uh, data uh, augmenters. They are all applied on on a data source called images. But if you want to do uh, the same uh, augmentation for images as well as for uh, masks, then you would be able to just put a dash mask there. Uh, if you would like to, uh, if you, if you deal are dealing with you know five-dimensional data, you have for example a series of images, and you would like to have applied the the, the same rotation for all the images in the series, then you can change the dimension over which is the augmentation applied. Uh, and it's still somehow, you know, remember, it's still C++, it's still fast, so most likely 
uh, you will you uh, you will be able to you know still utilize the GPU to 100%. And it does a lot more more than than this. I think that that the CX stream itself would, would uh, uh, require a, a talk uh, about. Um, uh, but it's it's so so we don't have room for it now. Uh, maybe someday uh, uh, Philip will show you, uh, show you uh, the the C++ magic uh, behind it. Uh, it works. It's it's really, it's really nice. I like it. Uh, uh, and ultimately, uh, you will be able to use your C++ compiled uh, uh, library in in Python. You'll be able to uh, inherit from from the class you created in, in C++ in Python, and you know just. Uh, write a, a Python function, and uh, I, I assume that in the in the C++ data set uh, there is a function called train stream, and it's really uh, uh, this this is the C++ stuff happening there, and and you can use it uh, quite comfortably from from Python, uh, and uh, this is an example of you know a uh, really simple visualization met method on on the data set. Uh, which would just, you know, uh, show you a bunch of images which are uh, in the stream, uh, and we, you, I use it functions like this, like mm, hundred times uh, a day. So uh, you, you can have a download here, etc., etc. So this, uh, this was the uh, CX stream, uh, the hooks, uh, and. Hooks are really the, the bread and butter of, of CX flow. Uh, we have, you know, for example, there's a, there's a hook that will show you the progress of, of the epoch. Uh, this is, you know, some some proprietary uh, proprietary hook uh, in the particular project. Uh, it will compute a mean of loss over all the examples in the epoch. Uh, it will lock uh, the 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 epoch uh, the loss afterwards. It will uh, lock you know profiling um, or profiling of, of of the training. For example, how much time you spent actually training uh, your model, how much time you spent uh, reading the data. So you can uh, you will immediately see what's the bottleneck, what's what's the r room for improvement, where it is. Uh, you can you can see that we have a hook for saving the best model over this particular variable uh, and you want to maximize you know, accuracy, that's quite natural. Uh, you want to stop after 500 epochs. Uh, if you want to stop after 12 hours, uh, so be it, you know, just at hours, uh, uh, double clan uh, five. Uh, so you, you, you get the idea, right? Uh, what it can do, uh, it can do need visualizations, confusion matrices like that. So, for instance, you you are training uh, some kind of OCR model, uh, and we we wrote uh, a hook which will uh, with, uh, do this this plot in Cber, and like two weeks later, we use the very same hook without changing a line of code for for a more complicated case where we have the whole you know alphabet and and you can see the the the, the issues right there. Uh, we have this hook we wrote uh, half a year uh, ago, for for I don't know for which project it was, but we used it like the last week uh, to see how our segmentation goes. Uh, just we just added the, the the hook to to the configuration and there there you go. Uh, actually, I don't know how much time I have. Not much, I suppose, sir. Three minutes. All right. So uh, perhaps I will show you uh, the, the the hooks afterwards. Uh, usually we we create some kind of hook which which uh, helps us in, in in project. We we move it to the to the blocks later on and to the to the public level of the stuff even later. Uh, but we don't write the same code uh, any anymore. Uh, worker and dealer. Uh, so. Uh, it's really a work in progress, uh, but I think that all of these, uh, all the stuff here is already available for us. Uh, uh, the dealer provides a unified API for using the models. Uh, it will then, uh, you know, identify which which model I I, I want to run. Uh, is it 
already running, so I can just I sh give him the data and get the results. Uh, if it's not, then you know he needs to s schedule uh, the model uh, to s some of the resources. Uh, then you c it, it, it can uh, use the model. Uh, it allows you to customize the pre and post processing of, of your requests, uh, uh, and it can it can bo run both uh, serving and training, uh, uh, and it, it is of course 100% legal. Uh, same applies for the worker. <laughs> Uh, the worker does the heavy lifting. It's basically the the tool the dealer has uh, to you know um, um, uh, serve your requests, uh, and it's all powered by Docker, which I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> the, which one of you actually l like Docker? Hey, we, who who actually hates Docker? Who thinks it's a bad thing? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Someone I, I can relate to. Uh, so that's that's it at the moment. Uh, uh, in the hopefully foreseeable future, we want to support uh, implement support for other ML framework frameworks. We have uh, some work in progress there. Uh, we want to you know uh, uh, implement a basic reinforcement learning agents and, uh, and the stuff that's that's uh, working right now. Uh, but uh, uh, looking at, uh, at you, I, uh, I'm afraid it's 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 too early for that. Uh, it's uh, I, I'm not sure if, if anyone would use that. Use that. Uh, we want to release the the worker and dealer eventually. I hope. Uh, and in in really long term, we we are considering six uh, uh, as a service. This is the last point. You know. Uh, Finish up everything I talked about uh, today. Uh, cover all the requirements I, I sketched out. Uh, create a dashboard for it. Uh, create some kind of user interface so you would be able to overview your trainings. You wouldn't be uh, you wouldn't have to care about the the hardware stuff. Uh, it will be all um, you know um, deployed uh, both the training and and, and the, the trained models with dealer. Uh, on our hardware or some kind of cloud provider doesn't matter, uh, and you know uh, we'll do all that for your money, of course, uh, sometime in the future. Uh, it's that's all uh, I think. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm quite confident that you, c you can use Google, but in the case you, you you can't, there are the you know the links you can check out. Uh, if if you if you liked uh, what I what I showed you, uh, and I think it will be just an hour, so that's now that's all, folks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, um, if there are any questions, please, I will just pass you the microphone. Okay. Yeah. Crap, I was hoping that, that, that there won't be any. <laughs> I, I would like to ask you less technical questions. What are the uh, your clients and what is the typical application so of, of all this? Uh, so w what do you do for money? Yeah, uh, so uh, we as, as I mentioned, I, I, we, we developed, uh, we are developing uh, and, and delivering and maintaining custom machine learning dash uh, deep learning solutions for the clients. The clients are usually uh, other businesses, so it's B2B basically. Uh, the clients are uh, banks, telco operators, uh, we have uh, ICOM uh, for SN client, so we do also uh, the, the sort of medical imaging. Uh, uh, we have a few projects in, um, in this area. Uh, yeah, but that should answer your question. I suppose. Thank you. You mentioned that you also do some project for the medical sector. That's and, right. And uh, if I recall correctly, for medical purposes, you have to uh, validate results and you have to assure some kind of consistency and and uh, reliability. Uh, how do you how do you add these 
to your to your framework? Yeah, well, uh, we do monitor the, the performance uh, quite fairly. Uh, we uh, we actually do not make the the medical uh, software in the legal form of, uh, um, legal sense. Uh, we usually, you know, just deliver the, the models, and it's up to some somebody else to actually uh, cover it with uh, with the, all the certifications and and valid clinical validation. Uh, that, that's you know that, that's quite a complicated process, and uh, we we want to f focus on the on the uh, on the machine learning stuff. So, for example, we are we we, we are de delivering a solution for a merit company, and it will you know uh, take a care of of all the certification stuff, and we'll just do the machine learning work. Uh, I was I was more interested in how you, for example, incorporate some methods to avoid bad misses, for example, which would be which would be unacceptable for these kind of applications because there is a certain kind of randomness and yeah uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 how, yeah how do you assure that it oh, would uh, not do really really bad yeah uh there's always chance of that and you know uh, th th that's more broad broad question actually for for instance uh we often find out that that um, our models are somehow somewhat Better than the humans actually, and, and even humans make errors. And then there's uh, uh, this this sort of question of who is actually responsible for the model, right? Uh, so it all depends uh, uh, on on the case. Uh, we definitely monitor, and and many of the you know many hooks can uh, tell you what, what's what 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 are the errors that, that your model makes. So uh, for the the process. Yeah, we are monitoring what's what, uh, how the model performs, you know, what classes uh, uh, are, um, which are hard, which are which are easy. Uh, if the if the client uh, tells us that that this is unacceptable, then you know we we try to <laughs> sort of persuade the model uh, to to do not to not not make these these mistakes. Uh, but but the tricks. Employed uh, for for this are different for each case. Uh, in in general, uh, you will never be sure. I, I think you, you won't have 100 percent on NIST. <laughs> and and in 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 healthcare is a, a big topic. And and one of the you know modus operandi in, uh, is is the the. the the model uh, is only, you know, it gives you, it provides you some kind of guidance, but the final decision is always on, on the, on the doctor, uh, on a human. Uh, and uh, I, I've even read some papers that that the the, the model wasn't better than than humans, but if you combine these two things together, uh, human and uh, it, it got hints i think it was, it was uh, lung cancer detection uh, that the, the the humans with uh, deep learning uh, models were even better than each of these two things separately so do i understand correctly that uh, you can do testing of the precision and the reliability of the models through using hooks yeah of course mm -hmm. well we we monitored its performance uh to 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 the detail detail we need uh, uh, and and some of the hooks would be uh, definitely handy for for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Okay, do we have some more questions? Okay, I have one. Uh, why do you hate Docker? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it breaks all the time. <laughs> it it just n never works. Like. Is there any particular reason connected to machine learning or deep learning? Well, yeah, uh, one of the, one of the things you, you need to uh, make working is uh, you need to align the version of, of driver for GPUs. Uh, so you need to use I don't know Docker two or the NVIDIA Docker two or uh, you know uh, it it it, uh, uh, f it seems to me that that only a way of you know really. Ensuring that that it will never break is to freeze everything on the operating system, all the packages, uh, all the stuff, uh, and that's also not not a good way to you know maintain it long term. So, uh, but you know I don't have an alternative for for it. So. <laughs>
Okay, one last question. Anyone? If not, thank you once again. <laughs>